gonna put some. <laughs> oh, forget that. I wish my regular metronome worked. Okay, let me let me try it one more time with this. I really wanted to show you this because it is so cool, but it's just not gonna work for me. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna do the metronome. It is so important that you do the metronome. I'll just tell you how I do it. So um at the beginning, like one of our first tricks is we get to, I think probably probably the the, uh, the first tricky spot, ah, we'll get rid of that thing, you let me down. Let's go back to our music. Probably the first tricky spot to work on is right here. We've got the D major right there. So, um, and that comes at the end of, you know, a lot of tricky stuff there um, going through in that first line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my measure no where it's going. And I want to hear all three of those eighth note beats. So I'm going to hear click, 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 click. And I would, maybe it's a bit much to do all that. So I'm going to start on the F sharp here on the second bar right there. And I'm just going to take that line. We're going to work our way through it backwards. And I'm going to go. set my metronome, I'm going to move it up two clicks, which is about like this. It doesn't sound any faster, okay, but it is faster. Move my metronome two more clicks faster, still doesn't feel or sound any faster. Do that one. So we're going to slow the metronome back down to where it was at 46 or whatever, and we're going to do this measure. And I just want to do that much from the downbeat to the next downbeat to the next bar. So we're going to what we're doing is we're creating two patterns that are almost sort of memorized, rather than having 16 or 18 notes and a bunch of different fingers. Now instead of having 18 of something, we've got two of something that we're doing. So here's the first one or the second one of those. We're moving backwards. by stopping on that pivot point, which is the downbeat of the second bar. So we're going to go. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Let's do that again. Now the next step is to put them together, but slow it down again to put them together. Let's do it again. Two clicks faster. to the end. Usually we start at the beginning and things are okay at the beginning and we get to the end and our brain is a little bit tired, our lips are starting to get tired, our fingers are starting to get tired and confused and we mess up at the end. When you start at the end, you're starting at the point where it's normally the hardest and you're working towards where it's getting the easiest because you've done that the most. When we start at the beginning, we've done the beginning the most and we mess up at the end. Let's start at the end. Let's learn that the best and then we start when we're fresh, we do the beginning part where our brains are still fresh, we get to the end of that long line and then we're working towards, oh, I know this, this is easy, I got this got this made. And that's a great way to practice. And, and we're not talking about trumpet playing here. We're talking about psychology. This is the way to learn. It's a way to teach yourself how to do a skill. And I think that's a great way to do it. The metronome is so crucially important because it's black and white. It's law and order. And if you stick with the metronome, it gives your brain one more thing solid to connect those, uh, those fingerings to and those art articulations to. If it's not, if you don't have the metronome, it's all mush. And it can be speeding up and slowing down and there's, there's nothing to hold it together. You need law and order. You need that black and white metronome is truly your friend. Make yourself do it. I know I say, ah, oh, I'm steady. It's, it's so easy, you know, it's so hard to make yourself do the simplest thing, just getting out the phone and turning on the metronome. Um, I want to do another one. How are we doing for time? Uh, just a little bit. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about, um, 
another thing. This tricky intervals in this. There's a lot of articulation. There's a lot of tricky intervals in it. Um, one of the things that I think is one of the most helpful things to do is to buzz and to sing. So I'm, I like to practice this on the metronome like this. And being very careful to play exact notes and play it slow enough to where I can get it right. And then I maybe do it on the trumpet, but with the trumpet, and I'm going to be singing the pitches. And then play it, play it like that. But if you can do that, if you can hear the notes clearly in your head, you're less likely to crack pitches. And that's especially important whenever you get down to the one, two, three, the fourth line, and you got. in that way. Um, just small chunks. You get a hamburger or a pizza, you don't stuff the whole thing in your mouth, you, have, you take it one bite at a time. And if you work on your music that way, you'll save so much time and frustration. Um, at the speed that this thing is marked at the faster speed, the 76, I have to double tongue that. You may not have to. So you, most of you may have tongues way faster than mine. Um, but if you're going to double tongue it, start learning it double tongue at the slow tempo. So I'm practicing da da ga da ga di da da ga da ga di da And then just learning the double tongue at that speed and gradually speeding up that the way I want to perform it as I get there. Um, plan where you want to breathe. Don't wait until you run out of air to breathe because if you do, you'll mess up. So mark those breaths in the part and practice breathing there in those spots. And breathe before you need it. Plan where you want to breathe and, and make it comfortable to breathe. Um, wide slurs, I recommend practicing wide slurs out of the Arbens and the Schlossberg books. And I gave you a couple of page numbers. Um, there's an octave slur section in the Arbens book. It's one page, uh, page 131, that also has tenths on the bottom. That's like slurring from a C to an E, D, F. F, E, G, things like that. Those are really good to do. It won't help you to do it just once in a while to just do it once a week. You got to do them every day. Do them every day. Work it into your routine and you, that way you'll be more comfortable in doing it with your music. Any questions about this one? Okay. You guys are so quiet. Thanks for letting me play for you and talk at you. I enjoyed it. Good luck on your trials this year.